So you just created a great inventory in Airtable that allows you to receive and sell products and track what's in stock. But most of the time when you're selling something, you don't just sell one kind of thing at a time. So for example, for a clothing store, when a customer comes up to check out, they're usually buying not just one thing, they might buy two pairs of pants and a t-shirt and a pair of socks. So how do you track an order like that that has multiple different items often with different quantities of each item, but still also track your overall inventory that doesn't really care where the orders came from. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do that using what some people call a junction table. This tutorial assumes that you already have a working inventory. If you're just creating an inventory for the first time, I recommend watching this video first, which goes through all the basics to get to this point. So here is the basic inventory that we set up in the other video. This is our products table, which shows all of the individual products that we're selling. And this is a clothing store. So we've got t-shirts that are coming green, yellow, and red, and then pants and hats that are the same. We even have a nice gallery here that shows off our products, what is in stock, and then buttons that lead to forms that allow us to receive and sell product. And so back in my grid here, I can see that I've got these linked records to the received items and the sold items. And so these are these two tables here that track everything that I received and everything that I sold. And my sold table is also linked to customers. So every time that I sell something, I can link it to a customer. And then in my customers table, I can see the total sales that I've done with that customer over all of the different sales. But if I go back into my product sold table here, I can see that each row, each record is only allowing me to put one product in, right? So it's either red hats or green hats. It's not both. I don't even have the option to add a record and I could add that option. So if I go in here and I toggle this option that says allow looking to multiple records and hit save and then confirm change, I can add another product. So I've got red t-shirts here. Let's say I also want to add green t-shirts, but that didn't actually change my total order price at all because the system is not set up that way. It's just going to take five times 20 and give me a hundred. And so it thinks that I only made a hundred dollars, but because these are both linked back to the products table, actually the products table is going to think that I sold 10 t-shirts because it's going to log five red t-shirts and five green t-shirts. And that's kind of messed up too, because what if I wanted different quantities of the t-shirts? What if I wanted 10 red t-shirts and five green t-shirts? There's no way to do that. So the answer to this is to create a new table called orders that's actually going to track the bundles of products that we're selling in each order. And an order is actually a more natural link to customer than a product sold, right? Because at the end of the day, the customer is making an order that may have multiple products in it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually delete this customer link. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it here, delete field. And then I'm gonna go into the customers table and you can see this converted back into just a single line text because it's no longer linked anymore. So we'll delete this former link to the product sold. And I'm gonna leave the total sales roll up because we can just relink this to orders at the end. We still wanna know you know, how much each customer has spent with us in total. And now that we've done that, we're ready to create our new orders table. So let's create a new table, call it orders, delete the example fields. And I want this orders table to be really, really simple because I'm still going to be creating most of my information when I place an order in this product sold table. This is still where I say what kind of the product and, and what the quantity and the price was. And so for the orders table, I don't really want to enter any information. This is just gonna link the customer to a number of products on a given day, right? For a given sale. So for the first field, I'm gonna make an auto number field. And this is just going to create a unique number for each record. So we make sure these are differentiated and then for the primary field here, I'm gonna call this order number. And I'm gonna use the auto number, but I always want the order number to be six digits long. And so I'm gonna write a little formula here that takes our auto number and turns it into a six digit code. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in this formula that I wrote. And what this says is repeat zero six times minus the length of the auto number. So if the auto number is a single digit like one, it's gonna take five zeros and then add a one to the end. But if the auto number is two digits, so if it's say it's 24, it's gonna take four zeros and then put 24 after it. 
So that just gives us a nice uniform number here. Next, I want a date. And so for this field, I'm gonna use a created time field. And what this does is every time we create a new order, it's gonna log the exact time that that order was created. And I'm even gonna untoggle include time here because I don't really need to know what time, I just wanna know the date. So I'll click create field and it'll automatically name it for me. So that's called created. And now we are ready to add our linked records. So we are gonna link this both to the products sold and to the customers. So I'll open up a new field, link to another record, products sold. And then we'll create another one, link to another record, customer. And for products sold, I do wanna allow multiple records, right? I wanna allow multiple products to be in one order, but for customer, I don't wanna have multiple customers in one order, right? I just want one, so I'm gonna untoggle, allow linking to multiple records here, hit save, confirm change. And then lastly, I wanna know what the total price is of each order. So I'm gonna create a roll-up field. Let's call this total price. This is a roll-up. And so we'll look in products sold and the total order price. So this is gonna roll up the total order price of each product and the quantity for that individual product um, but it's going to add up any products that are linked to this order number together. So here I want to sum the values, right? I want to add them up and I'll hit create field. So we're basically there. Let's take this for a spin. I'm going to go into the products sold table and let's get rid of this extra green t-shirt. This is going to bother me. And I'm actually going to even toggle this back to just allow one record per row. And since we have all of these records already, let's just combine a few of these into an order. So up top, let's say the first five records are gonna be one order. I'm gonna go over here and click plus. So it gives me the option to link to the existing example orders here, but I can also add a new order right within this window. So I'll click add a new order. And then remember, all this stuff is automatic. So the, really the only thing that I need to enter here is the customer. So I can go ahead and say, yeah, I'm selling this to Dwayne Johnson. And then I can X out of this and I've got my new order number, and we know that that is linked to Dwayne Johnson. So now I can just drag this down for a few different records here. So it looks like Dwayne Johnson bought a lot of stuff. He got some green pants, yellow t-shirts, green t-shirts, yellow pants, etc. And now if I go over to the orders table, I can see order four here has all of these products in it. So it has all the products here with their specific quantities and that total order added up to $58,000. Over in our customers table, we can see that Dwayne Johnson has made one order. And now that we've got everything else set up, we can relink our total sales rollup. So this rollup is now going to come from orders and we'll choose the total price here and we're still summing the values. So hit save. And now you can see that Dwayne Johnson spent $58,000. And if I went back and say I wanted to place another order for Dwayne Johnson. Um, let's just say he bought just red t-shirts this time. So I'll create a new order here. This is order five and we'll add Dwayne Johnson again. And then I can go over to orders and see that we've got two orders with Dwayne Johnson and in customer, we're now up to $65,000 and we've got these two orders here. So that's the whole thing, but I wanna call your attention to one more thing, which is we haven't even looked at the products table this whole time. And that's because the products table isn't really concerned with customers or with orders. The products table just wants to know how many of each item we have in stock. And that is still affected by those orders, right? Because products table is linked to products sold. So when we ship any quantity of a product, it shows here. And because Dwayne Johnson bought so much merch, we're probably getting kind of low on some of these items. Otherwise, we've got five tables now and each one has a very specific job. The products table just shows us each individual product that we carry and how much we have in stock. The received table tells us anytime we receive items. Sold tells us anytime we've sold items. Customers show us information about what our customers have purchased. And lastly, the orders, which is a junction table, shows us the products that we've sold and their relationship to the customers who bought them.
So I hope you're enjoying making inventories in Airtable. It is truly such an enjoyable tool to use to set up this kind of a system. And I wanna keep making our inventory system better. So let me know in the comments what features you wanna add so we can keep this thing going. In the meantime, if you want to learn about some great automation features available in Airtable, I recommend you watch this video, which talks about how to make an automated hiring system in Airtable. It shows you how to build a system where you can automatically collect job applications from people who wanna work for you and then sends automatic reply emails confirming that they submitted their application. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.